after Virginia's struggles against UNC, some people have worried about the confidence of this team. Their team leader, London Parent, has said himself, it's a confidence killer right now, but all we can do is move forward. And it sounds like they started to do that pretty quickly. You think a game like that would make for a long, quiet three-and-a-half-hour bus ride back to Charlottesville, but it sounds like it was the opposite on the players-only bus. In fact, Kyle Guy told me that when highlights of that UNC game came on the TV, they just smiled. He said, we cracked some jokes. We had to laugh because we knew that's not the team we are. And if we let it affect us, if we dwell on it, it will affect how we play Monday against Miami. He said, we are not the type of team to hang our heads. So they just kind of laughed it off. Guys. All right, Allison, thank you. Virginia in the home white. Pat Driscoll filled the ball in the air, working with James Breeding and Jamie Lucky as our officials. And we're underway. By the way, the three-game losing skid was on the road to Virginia Tech in overtime at Duke and North Carolina. Yes. Not a bad loss amongst it. As Jim Laranega says, just because you've lost three in a row in this league doesn't mean you are struggling. A lot of it is the caliber of the opponent. First shot in the air for Virginia, short from the corner from Devin Hall, who's been slumping lately. He's now four for his last 18 from the floor. Miami with the ball without Jaquan Newton. Bruce Brown, the freshman, will see most of the action as the point guard. And an offensive foul called against Kamari Murphy as he took the pass in the low post. Miami coached by Jim Laranega, the second best player from Providence College in the building tonight. He's actually a terrific player, but not as good as Mrs. Burke for the Friar women. And I'm completely neutral tonight, despite the fact that I have prior allegiances in the building. And it's interesting, Sean, that, that Miami has started in the zone. I think part of the reason why is they're thin up front. They can't afford foul trouble. You hate to see your big guy get one on the offensive end as they did last possession. They played only seven men in each of the last two games. The wins against Georgia Tech and Clemson without Jaquan Newton. Likely to be a low-scoring game. These two teams play at a slow pace on offense. First basket of the game by Kamari Murphy. The fifth-year senior transfer from Oklahoma State. The teams have been giving him that face-up jump shot. We think of him more as a dunker on the interior, everything around the rim, but he's proven capable on a more than one occasion from that spot. Capable on Saturday in their home win against Clemson. He led the Canes with 15 points. Isaiah Wilkins from the elbow with the first bucket of the night for the Wahoos. I think that's key. I'd, I'd like to see Virginia operate from the elbow, and then maybe if they can get off the dribble drive, get their big guys involved maybe on dump downs. This is not a team, Virginia, that can dump it into the low post. No Anthony Gill who can draw multiple defenders. Gavon Reed, the best player for Miami. This shot well short. Ariel Shayok defending. Tony Bennett in his eighth season as head coach at Virginia. 89 wins the previous three seasons. Back-to-back 30-win -back seasons. And then if they didn't squander that double-digit lead in the second half, the lead eight against Syracuse, it would have been three straight. 30-win campaigns for Virginia. Wilkins the shot missed. Jack Salt all over the offensive glass. And if you're struggling to shoot it, Sean, if you can create more possessions by doing exactly that, give yourself more of an opportunity on the offensive end. Hall, trouble on the dribble as he got in the middle of that Miami defense. Shayok out of Ottawa, Ontario gets the friendly bounce. He's their second leading score at 9.7 per game. Virginia is the only team in major conference college basketball with only one player averaging in double figures in scoring. That's London Parentis at 12.6. One hander short from Reed. Tipped out by Wilkins to Salt. Parenta has been in a three-point shooting slump, and that's way off. And flying through the air, Bruce Brown, the freshman guard from Dorchester, Massachusetts. You talk about a guy that's struggling. That's a career 41% shooter. To me, when a guy like that misses that badly, that reflects confidence. Brent is now seven for his last 31 from three-point range. Nice move up and under by Buku Izundu, sophomore originally from Lagos, Nigeria, moved to Charlotte, North Carolina about six years ago. 
Well, I like his upside. He's added about 30 pounds. I think he's going to get more and more skilled under Jim Laranega. And the best part about those big guys, they want to be better. Quick ball movement and Hall, perhaps. That'll help him get back on track. Redshirt Jr. from Virginia Beach gives Virginia a 7-4 lead. And, and when a shooter misses his first shot, you like the fact that the ball touches him again, Sean, on reversal, and he doesn't hesitate. That's something Tony Bennett talked to his guys about. Hey, you get an open shot, pull it with confidence. Strong drive down the lane and up and in for Bruce Brown, the impressive freshman out of Vermont Academy. He had a 30-point game in their win, their biggest win of the year against North Carolina. You don't see straight line drives off of Virginia defense very often. The floater by Parentes. That to me is smart. You're not shooting it well, get a little bit closer. And it's interesting because Parentes, who's never been an alpha scorer, right? He's been the classic set of guards, but has to do so much. I think it's almost fighting his nature. Miami off the two straight wins. They've won four of their last five. Another bucket for Kamari Murphy, one of the three Canes team captains, along with the suspended Jaquan Newton and Davon Reed. Boy, that Laranega whistle cuts through everything. Shayok. Another soft bounce for Mario Shayok. That's a couple. They've gotten a lot of rim and dropped through. He was their leading scorer in that drubbing. At North Carolina on Saturday night, he led UVA with 13 points. They had a season low point total in that game. Good defense inside by Jack Salt. Just 41 points put on the board in Chapel Hill Saturday night by Virginia. It's a fairly typical game between these two, right? We played six minutes, not a stoppage in play. One foul called. These are the two teams that average the fewest possessions per game at the offensive end in the ACC. They tend to take their time on offense, work for the best shot they can find, usually late in the clock. Anthony Lawrence out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Long three. And a good rebound in traffic by Azundu. And then he got fouled. Well, Virginia on top and what we expect to be a low scoring affair. Sean said slow paced, but we'll take that finger roll. That's really nice. Love it. And BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. It has already been a special night here in Charlottesville before the game. Malcolm Brogdon, honored by the University of Virginia and Coach Tony Bennett, is number 15 retired. He is the eighth Virginia Cavalier in basketball to have his number retired. First team All-American last year, three times first team All-ACC. His parents are here. Even though he's very quiet and really did not want to speak, he gave a very touching speech, including the importance of his family, and his life. The decision to come to UVA said was the best decision he made in his life. And a significant, obviously, contributor on one of the most successful eras in this program's history, Sean. You and I watched him against Ohio State, the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Actually, he single-handedly almost won that game on the road. Juan Huell in off the Miami bench. Again, we expect to probably play just eight players tonight. No rim was drawn, so the shot clock never reset. Malcolm Brogdon, think about all the great players in the history of the ACC. He was the first player in the history of the conference to be the player of the year and the defensive player of the year in the same year, last year. So a lot of people question whether Malcolm could be an NBA player because of his lateral quickness problem. But to me, he was one of the smartest defensive players in the country. He's a starting point guard on the Milwaukee Bucks. Jason Kidd raves about him. He's averaging nine and a half points per game for the Bucks. One of the terrific success stories in the league this year. Shayok lost the ball. Ty Jerome is in off the bench for Virginia, number 11. Mamadi Diakite also in number 25. And Jared Reuter, number... 
51. And Darius Thomas Thompson is in the game. Reuter is number 31 for UVA. So bench players in the game on both sides, including that man, DJ Vasilovich, the freshman from Australia, missing his first shot of the night. He's been hot lately, a part of their recent success. Six for his last 13 from three-point range. He takes the vast majority of the shots from three, but Virginia's defense, I think, starting to get a grip on this Miami team, and I think Newton is a big miss. Think about some of their struggles guarding the ball screen, their last game, Virginia against North Carolina. Newton would have been in a lot of ball screens tonight. Shayok, the only starter on the floor right now for UVA. Shot clock at three. Darius Thompson, and it's locked up top, and a shot clock violation. Well guarded up top by Jim Laranega's Miami Hurricanes. When we come back, we'll visit with Joey Brackett's Joe Lenardi from the Brackett Bunker. Look at the ACC right now. Joey Brackett's has 10 ACC teams, 10 of the 15 in the field with Georgia Tech, the last team in. Clemson and Wake Forest barely on the outside looking in there in the first four out. And we're going to be joined now by Joe Lenardi. He is live in the Infinity Bracket Bunker. And Joe, good evening. Great to have you with us. How are you doing tonight, my friend? John, it must be that time. It is indeed that time. Let's talk about these two teams. Right now you have Virginia as a five seed. Not long ago they were in contention for one. Miami with a nine. Are they comfortably in, Joe, no matter how the rest of it goes, or do they still have work to do? I think they're about as comfortable as you can be, given the fact that they've had a pretty uneven season. You know, but the Hurricanes still, uh, I don't want to say work to do, Sean, but they're playing for a legitimate seed, and by that I mean getting in the top half of the bracket where they can, you know, think about realistically advancing. Joe, essentially was the Clemson-Miami game an elimination game because up until that point, even though Clemson was well under 500, you had them in the tournament. And how many teams do you think, Joe, in major conferences could potentially be under 500 and still make their way into that field? I've never seen anything like it, Doris. You'd have to go all the way back to the mid-80s and Johnny Orr at Iowa State once made the tournament as an at-large five and nine in the Big 12. Nobody's ever been four games under 500 as that large. But if Clemson were to win out, you know, they'd be eight and 10. They would get in. Three out of four might get them in because the bubble is really that soft this year and the depth and coattails of the ACC are that long. I don't agree with it, but last time I looked, I don't get a vote. And we're looking at your next four out. So essentially teams five through eight out Pittsburgh is in that group and the Panthers are four and ten same in the as ACC Clemson. right now yes exactly right same as Clemson I mean right now those two teams will be playing in the first day Tuesday at the ACC tournament okay so let, let me ask you both then your take on this so the sub 500 teams do you do you think there should be some minimum standard as it relates to conference record or this should always be about let's get the best at large teams in the field for me it's always about best at large teams regardless of, of conference record. Are you going to punish somebody for playing in the ACC? Jared Reuter called for the offensive foul. Joe, your thoughts? Here's what I would say about that, Garth. You know, nobody's missing a meal in the ACC, and by that I mean they get every advantage to earn an at large because of exposure and recruiting and level of play. And that's all great. But I think our sport would be better served by making teams become tournament eligible. And that, to me, would be 500 at least in your league games but here's what i would do i would count conference tournament games so if you finish eight and ten and you make that run to the final you're now eligible to be considered and imagine what that would do for these late regular season games and those early round conference tournament games you know on wednesday and thursday afternoon in half full buildings i don't see that it'd be anything other than a positive plus it would open up an at-large spot or two, you know, for a quality mid-major that's, you know, 28 and three or something like that. I, I don't think the sport is served well by having an 11th team from the ACC versus a second team from a quality league. I'm not talking about a, a, a low major. I'm talking about a true 
quality conference. Joe, these two teams have been very polite while you've been visiting with us and not scoring any points, so the conversation continues. We're visiting with Joe Lenardi from the Joe Lenardi from the Infinity Bracket Bunker. It's that time of the year as we head down toward selection show. Under nine minutes to go and a half here. Shot clock running down again for Miami. Vasilovich. And there's a bucket. All right, so I got one more for you, Joe. Just because obviously Gonzaga has got a very good chance, according to our BPI, of going undefeated the rest of the regular season. I think it might be up to 62% that they come out of their conference tournament. Do you believe, regardless of who wins, let's say North Carolina wins regular season, then should win the, the ACC? Who's your overall number one seed if Gonzaga wins out? I would go if Jack of the four teams on the top foul. line right now, Villanova, Kansas, Gonzaga, Carolina, if they all went out, Gonzaga would not be a, a number one overall for me. But if the others lose along the way, I think they move up with each loss by those other teams. I mean, 33 and 0. They beat Arizona on a neutral floor, Bard on a neutral floor, Iowa State on a neutral floor, Tennessee, which is among the first four out on a neutral floor. I'm not sure what more you can ask of them. Jack Salt, the free throw shooter. Both teams had been on almost a five minute scoring drought. Incredible. It just gives me more time to score points since they're not. Avon Reed called for the foul. Two free throws by Salt. And it's 13 to 10, Virginia. 8.20 to go. Well, Joe, we know you always have work to do. At this time of year in particular, so we'll let you get out of the bracket bunker for a few minutes. And we enjoyed the visit as always, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. You got it. There's a dunk. Izundu. As Miami back within one with eight minutes to go. And as anticipated, a low scoring first half. Virginia number one in the country in scoring defense, giving up 55.8 points per game. I have to say the best point I heard in that entire thing from Joe, uh, uh, Sean, was the fact that, you know, if you get to 500 by, by record, those early round tournament games, we would appreciate a little bit of excitement in those. There's a moving screen called against Jack Salt. Well, a combined 25 points, but let's give it up for a little Izundo, leaving no doubt at the window. Go ahead. Hey, go chin, chin. Man, man. Three, hey, Bruce, to Iowa. We're quickly showing the two and then going to the three and matching. Show the two, play the three. Jim Laranaga, nice enough to wear a microphone for us. You don't need uh, the microphone to hear the whistle. He told us that story growing up in the Bronx. He yeah. wanted to let his mom know when he's on the way home so she could open the door. <laughs> My goodness, what a communication system. He is a great communicator. Miami foul on the rebounding action. Looks like it's on Kamari Murphy. It's nice to hear the players talk with such affection for their coach visiting with Bruce Brown today the talented freshman from Boston he, said he loves playing for coach Laranaga and you hear that over and over again you know what Sean he's an enthusiastic teacher of the game he's obsessed with numbers nice drive by Parentes. and if you're Jim Laranaga and you've established success at a couple different programs why take Miami a program that didn't even have a basketball team from 71 to 85 he had opportunities to take other jobs including his alma mater province but he believed in the community, had ties down there, his grandfather, born in Cuba, and then became a successful businessman down in the Miami area. I love this story, and he's been terrific for this program. Bad pass by Murphy, that field goal in the last possession by Parentes, the first field goal for Virginia in seven minutes. We want to span while we're talking to Joey Brackett's of five minutes and 32 seconds in which neither team scored. And as a result, it's 15 to 12 with just more than six minutes left in the half. Isaiah Wilkins scores inside. Looks like he took a bump from Izundu without a whistle. It sure did. And they run that circle motion. They're so good coming off the screens at the box. And Wilkins, actually, they post him up. So they got a good interior bucket. 
You talk about Jim Laranega late in his career, electing to go to Miami. Offensive foul call. On Izundu. Jim Laranega was assistant here back in the early 80s under Terry Holland. Good defense there by Wilkins and a good call by Pat Driscoll. And it was then that he said, someday I'm going to be a head coach of the ACC. Here's a look back at those great teams. They went to Final Fours with Terry Holland. Two Final Fours during Laranaga's time here. They won three ACC titles. Having Ralph Sampson help. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I loved watching Ralph Sampson play. Loved it. And I, my favorite game maybe in history is the Ralph Sampson Patrick Ewing Georgetown Virginia game. Parenta stepped back. It rattled out. Tipped by Diakete, but it would not go in for UVA. Just 12 points on the board for Miami as we approach five minutes to go in the first half. Brown, the freshman, splits the defense. Well, he's impressive. Our next ESPN Super Tuesday doubleheader is tomorrow. You might expect an SEC Big Ten doubleheader, South Carolina. Takes on 13th Frank Florida. That's at seven in Indiana and Iowa. Boy, big game for Indiana right on Joey Brackett's bubble. Super Tuesday presented by CenturyLink on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. The foul was on Darius Thompson. His first tight atop the SEC. I think about Florida just handling Kentucky the first time those two teams played and obviously playing without their big man the rest of the season. I think Mike White is going to do great things at Florida, and he, took, he had big shoes to fill with Billy sure Donovan's did. success. National Coach of the Year candidate, certainly. Three-point lead for UVA. Five minutes to go in the first half. The, the only meeting of the regular season between these two teams. They last met in the ACC tournament in Washington last March. Game one by Virginia. Parentes too strong. Sometimes I get the feeling he's trying to do too much. Success of possession, Sean, where I thought he forced it. There was more clock, and Virginia's never been a team that as that thing gets under 10, they panic. Parentes doesn't need to press. Parentes just two out of seven from the floor. Brown. Shot clock about to expire. Brown. Shot clock violation. I mean, to me, you're seeing two teams that have very little ability to create their own shot right now. I think Jaquan Newton's a, a big miss. We saw the young freshman Brown get to the rack earlier, but Virginia's defense is just shrinking the floor, trying to take away driving lanes. As you saw Jim Laranega thought Brown was fouled. Thompson well guarded by Brown. The Akite after the fake dumped it off. Brown wanted to lay it in or dunk it. And they get bailed out as Wilkins is fouled. He'll be at the free throw line after the media timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Metro PCS and its nationwide Ford. Ben, it's been a terrific coaching job for many years here at Virginia, but. There are very few answers at the offensive end. The fact that he had them uh, just a couple of weeks ago in contention to win the ACC title right. is remarkable. Isaiah Wilkins, the free throw. The foul before the break was on Kamari Murphy. That's two for Miami. And again, they're playing really with seven men tonight, so that could be a problem. That's why they've been in the zone the whole half. And to your point about Tony Bennett, the coaching job he's done, I think probably underappreciated is the amount of talent they lost. Austin Nichols would have helped because he would have given him a low post presence so he could also play from the free throw line. Think about the NBA guys. Justin Anderson is very well thought of in Dallas. Malcolm Brogdon starting for the Milwaukee Bucks. He's got Mike Toby on the roster as the three goes down for Mr. Reed. Mike Toby on the roster in Charlotte, and Anthony Gill is tearing it up in, in Turkey, and I think he'll get another chance. Look at what you have lost over the last couple of years. This is how you built your program with this kind of talent level. Well, Toby, Brockton, and Gill were all here last year for Virginia, and yet they were a preseason top-ten team. Part of that, as you said, because 
Nichols had transferred in, but he was dismissed from the program in November. He is still, we understand, in school here and taking classes. Anthony Lawrence, now two to tie and three for the lead for Miami, despite the major struggle the Hurricanes have had on the offensive end. And there it is, the lead. Vasilovich with the three. He's an experienced international player. He's played for Australia's national team in world competitions. And he has seven of the 20 Miami points. And a steal by Brown. And the missed dunk with Parentes running back to contend. Big momentum change right there. And one of the things Jim Laranega talked to us about is confidence. He said, we are right there neck and neck with this team. We were the same a year ago, and they hit us with a 14-2 run. We didn't play with confidence. That one hurt. Parentes got it off for Devin Hall. He missed. Out of bounds to Miami with just under two minutes to go in the half. Well, you make a great defensive play. You shoot the gap, and then... Your teammates will give you a little bit about this, especially if you're able to win the basketball game. Well, the story Jim Laranega told us about Brown, they were trying to recruit Brown. Of course, so much of recruiting now is done via texting. Brown apparently does not respond to text, so Miami thought they just weren't in it with Brown. And all of a sudden, they got a phone call from Bruce Brown. He said, when are you going to come up to Vermont Academy and watch me play? Coach Laranega said, oh, we didn't know you were interested in us. We'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Fuel the miss on the tip. It's a huge gap for the program. Mm -hmm. I know he played up north, but he is from the area. I mean, this is a kid who's, I think, you know, you expand your footprint as a, as a program. I think it's a big deal. Brown a great get. Fuel a great get. The local product out of Miami, New Orleans. Top 100 player. Recruiting strategy going forward, trying to get the best players in Florida, particularly in South Florida, to stay at home. Under a minute to go in the half. Isaiah Wilkins call for the offensive foul as he lowered the shoulder into Anthony Lawrence. Well, that's a good call, I think, Sean. You can't displace either as the defensive player or the offensive player. Now he sells it, no question about it. How about what we have coming Wednesday? Four Hall of Fame coaches, but more important than that, a critically important game. North Carolina's in first place in the ACC by a game over Louisville. They'll play each other at nine. Duke's also one game back, and they're up at the Carrier Dome to take on Syracuse. Great night of college hoop action. The Sonic Blockbusters on ESPN also streaming live on the ESPN app, and watch ESPN. They'll get a lot of activity, the app, on Wednesday night. Lawrence a miss. It didn't hit rim, apparently. Vasilovich alert to that. Missed the three. And now they can take the last shot of the half. And Brown realized that. And everybody in the building heard the Jim Laranega whistle. He wants a timeout. With 14.4 to go on the shot clock off. Miami with a one-point lead. Eat here on Big Monday, presented by eBay from Charlottesville, Virginia. And a foul to give, so ideally on the catch for Miami, you might give them a bounce, two bounces, three bounces, depending on how quickly the play is developing, and then use the foul. Give them less clock to work with. You have to have practice this, though, because you see it often not executed properly, somebody anticipating what you're doing, and get to the free throw line. Ten seconds to go in the half. Brown with Shayok switching out on him. Two seconds, tough shot by Reed. They got a terrible shot in the half. Virginia, no field goals in the final 6-10. Miami, a 6-0 run to end the half. There was a five and a half minute stretch where neither team scored. Here's Allison Williams. Coach Bennett, no field goal in the final six minutes of that half. What are you seeing on the offensive end? Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're struggling a little bit. We're defending well. That's keeping us in it. 
Gave up a couple offensive rebounds, but we got to keep running our stuff hard, trying to get into the paint, shoot the shots when they're there. But uh, hopefully some of them will drop and we'll run our offense with a little more pace and get some more rhythm looks. Tony, thank you. Virginia shot 33% in the half. Pitcher's duel here in Charlottesville, 20 to 19 Miami. Now the halftime report with Carl, Jay, and Seth. Hi, right, Sean, Alfa Romeo, and thank you to be. So time for Sean's cliched question of the halftime segment. How can these teams find some offense in the second half, Miss Hedgeberg? Well, did you see, I don't know whether it was exasperation with Allison or just quite trying to search for something that Tony Bennett doesn't quite have. Listen, he's got to continue to grind on the defensive end of the floor. And if you're Jim Laranega, keep crashing the glass and try to get yourself second opportunities. Allison, these coaches have any answers at the half? Well, they're trying to find some, Sean, for Coach, for Coach Laranega and Miami's offense. He said it's a bit of a cat and mouse game with them and Virginia's pack defense, which they've tried to spread out. Of course, that's easier said than done. He said at times they've been able to do it better than at others. He doesn't have a ton of options, obviously, only playing seven guys in that first half, but when they are a bit smaller with DJ Vasilovich out there, he said that gives us four options that can shoot the three, and that helps us spread them out just a little bit. The worst thing you can do, Allison, against a pack line defense is have clunky spacing. And it's preached at practice this morning. You can't have everybody standing in the paint. So when you go small, you downsize. You're basically going four round one, and it automatically gives you a little bit more spacing. Anthony Lawrence, a miss from Miami. First possession of the half. Now Virginia gets cracked at it. London Parentes. Mariel Shayok out there with. Isaiah Wilkins, Devin Hall, and Jack Salt, the same five that started the game, beginning the second half for Tony Bennett. And the Perintas miss, rebounded by Kamari Murphy, playing with two fouls for Miami. Bruce Brown, he'll take it, and he's short from three-point range. And then it's flicked away, but out of bounds by Ibuka Zundu. You can tell these teams are both so well scouted. Miami is locking and trailing on that circle motion. Every time you think about Virginia's success along that baseline, Sean, with the curls and the reeds and the flares they typically get, Miami doing a heck of a job on the defensive end as well. Shayok. He got Lawrence in the air. James Breeding called the foul. Lawrence didn't like it. It's his first. He's the son of a coach, Anthony Lawrence. His dad, Anthony Sr., played at Miami. Was his high school coach in St. Petersburg. Anthony Sr. played in the early 90s and then played professionally. Portugal, Dominican Republic, and Mexico. Some nice places to play, especially if you like the sun and the beach. The different tax consequences, and we always like those. Once again, you're way above my intellectual plane here on Big Money. It's so nice to be with you for the first time this season. I can't believe they've kept us apart almost until conference tournament time. I'm going to give you a big amen on that, my friend. Well, we're picking up right where we left off in the first half. Two minutes gone by. Neither team has scored a point. Virginia's had two points, and they haven't had a field goal since 6-10. Remain in the first half. And there we go, right on cue. Doris in the first half, they went the final 6-10 of the half without a field goal to Virginia. They went a span in the middle of the half of 6 minutes and 24 seconds without a field goal, and yet they're ahead. Kind of remarkable. It is remarkable. And I will say this, there's the post-to-post -post double you become accustomed to, and that's that's what happens, right? You get into rotation, and Parentes is in jail going against a big guy. But one thing on their last offensive possession, Tony Bennett said to Allison right before going off the floor, we've got to find a way into the paint. Well, Devin Hall got into the paint. Can they touch the paint again here on this possession? They're in the paint with Hall and a shot way off. Rebounded by Murphy. Murphy now leads Miami with six points. That's tied with Isaiah Wilkins for game high honors. And Murphy unlucky there, popped out, and a little too frisky was a zoom do on the rebound. Well, Jim Laranega giving it to James Breeding because obviously he's thin up front. And what was that conversation with Jamie Lucky and the official score? Did they give Coach a warning? 
I think so. I don't know for sure, but that's what it looked like. Shot clock at one, Parentes. Apparently, you know, we can know what Coach Laranega said because he has a microphone, and apparently when Jimmy Lucky told the table that Laranega had been warned, Jim Laranega asked his bench if that was a joke. <laughs> Jimmy Lucky's face would say, no, no, that was not a joke. Well, I put myself on a self-imposed moratorium on comments about Jamie Lucky on Big Mom. That's probably a good moratorium to have. So I guess just by saying that, I've already violated it. <laughs> Zundu, the bucket. They like his potential. He's already added about 30 pounds in his two years at Miami. Originally committed to go to Charlotte, but then they had a coaching change. He was released from the commitment to the 49ers. Came to Miami. Hall took the hit. He'll take it to the free throw line after the timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Logan. In theaters March 3rd. Rated R. And DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Well, on Big Monday, it's been a low-scoring affair, but last two possessions for Miami. You know the post-to-post -post double is coming. How about that? They worked hard on that jump pass to get out of the trap, and then in a little post-entry. And how about this nice-looking move by the young Zundu? Devin Hall at the free throw line for Virginia makes the first to get the Cavaliers back within two. Sean McDonough, Doris Burke, and Allison Williams. Big Monday presented by eBay from Charlottesville, a one-point game. These two teams tied for sixth in the 15-team ACC. Top four teams in the conference at the end of the regular season get a double bye. And that's big. The tournament in Brooklyn goes on for what, about 10 days? Yeah. <laughs> Starts on Tuesday, two weeks from tomorrow. Diakite, the foul for Virginia. Such a rare feat. You think back to, to Kemba, Walker's, Kemba Walker's run through the Big East when that conference was as powerful as this league was. ACC tournament in Brooklyn. How do you think the fan base feels about that? It'll be interesting. See what kind of turnout there is. Tough shot made by Kamari Murphy. He'll be back home in Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn, New York, Lincoln High School. He has eight points. Of course, Lincoln High School's produced some great players over the years. Sebastian Telfair, Stephon Marbury, Lance Stevenson among others. Darius Thompson, kind of a strange dribble, but kept it alive for Hall. And a three for UVA to tie the game at 26. Well, Devin Hall is starting to get some things done. He, he, to me, looks like the most confident guy. In fairness to poor London Parentes, I know he's not shot it well, Sean, but he keeps getting it in late clock situations. Diakite instead. Bugas Wundu got called for the foul, his third. Well, this is offense by accident because this young man is uncertain what to do. I don't think he traveled, but he understands his game is not to create, but he gets himself in a situation where he's got no choice. And they bail him out with a foul. <laughs> to me, that's the best you can hope for from your post. You dribble drive, Sean, you put a nice little either a pocket pass or a nice soft bounce pass to your post players. But if you don't put it to Virginia's post in exactly the right position, they're not equipped to do a whole lot with it.
six unanswered points for Virginia. Will take a three-point lead. Crowd trying to get back fully engaged. Huell called for an offensive foul. The freshman, the line, Huell. So Virginia changes the momentum, and no surprise how they've done it. They've done it on the defensive end of the floor, although on the catch, I don't think I agree with that. Shouldn't he be allowed to turn? Like, the vertical cylinder? I, I know that's the terminology. I feel like the defense gave him a lot of room there. Virginia with a chance to take its largest lead of the night. That matches it at five points. Beautifully executed on the pass to Darius Thompson from London Parenthes. Thompson is fouled on the way up. Well, Virginia getting some juice off their defense. They're being more aggressive and assertive. They're trying to make things happen on the defensive end of the floor. And then all of a sudden, things starting to loosen up on the offensive end. They work so hard, Miami, at staying attached. But they attack DJ, and he gets beat on the back door by the athletic Thompson. And the transition opportunity leads to a couple free throws. I was wondering when they took that five-point lead with Jim Larrone to call a timeout. He did, he signaled the play he wanted. I think he feels like this is going to be a possession game, Sean, and he wants those timeouts at his disposal. As hard as it is to score against Virginia, seven points, a big deficit. Foul on Reed was his second. Ten straight points for UVA to give the Cavs their biggest lead of the night. Jim Larrone will use that timeout. Krzyzewski vs. Beheim. Patino vs. Williams. This is going to be a blockbuster. Because we going to blow your own mind. I know what I'm going to be doing Wednesday night watching we that doubleheader. North Carolina leading the ACC by a game over Duke and Louisville. Those three teams all in action. Duke taking on Syracuse here. Virginia with a 10 0 run against Miami. To open up a seven point lead, 12 and a half minutes to go from Charlottesville, Virginia. Now they had success early in this half going inside. And Davon dribbles it off his leg. They try to isolate him on the left wing and let him dribble drive it. Well, you wonder about fatigue playing with seven men in each of the previous two games. We have a quick turnaround here. Both of these teams played on Saturday. A hard fought win for Miami at home against Clemson. And in the words of Tony Bennett, Virginia got pounded at North Carolina in the season low 41 points. What did he say? Four games in eight days for them. They're a little deeper than is this Miami team. Nice pass. Thompson underneath to Diakito. And all of a sudden, they've got a little something going on the offensive end. And that's the exact play I'm talking about, Sean. Just a pocket pass, make it real simple for the young big. Brown underneath, Huell could not finish, but he'll go to the free throw line. That's just the second foul of the half against Virginia. Miami's been called for six. The personal to Thompson is second. Well, you, you see the little bounce pass by Thompson. It's just beautifully done. When we come back, the man of the night, Malcolm Brogdon, will visit with Allison Williams. We don't know your mind. And take part in the halftime ceremony. What does it mean to you to have your number retired here? Uh, you know, it's a huge honor. It's a blessing to be in this position, to have this opportunity. So, uh, you know, first I had to give thanks to, to God and all the people that helped me get to this point. So I'm, I'm happy about it. And a 
lot of them are here supporting you tonight as you watch this game. And it's a Virginia team that struggled to score, especially in your absence. What have you observed here, though, in the second half? If they've, if they've been able to go on that 12-0 run? Oh, uh, you know, just moving the ball. I think once a few shots fall, uh, it really changes the course of the game for them. Their energy picks up, and they just start playing better as a team. So congratulations on your number being retired and the success you're having in the NBA. What is it about your game that's been able to translate to the next level that maybe some people didn't necessarily expect? Uh, for me, I think it's confidence. I think when you believe you're an NBA player and you believe you fit, I think things work out for you and you play as, as you expect to play. Welcome. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of this night. Thank you. And congratulations. To Malcolm Brockton, Dwan Hewell called for a foul from Miami that puts the Canes over the limit. They're not only a great player here, five years, got his undergraduate degree and a master's degree. Great student, athlete in every sense of the word, great citizen of this community. And as Allison alluded to, surprising a lot of people with the success that he's having. I don't know why when you're the best player in this league that people are going to be surprised when you go to the NBA and you have success. Well, and he, he mentioned a couple things, confidence and fit. And sometimes a guy like him, who, yes, I know, Sean, athletically you might question whether or not he can make it, but he's so smart, he's so fundamentally sound, he's physically and mentally tough. To me, he's one of my all-time favorite college basketball players. And stylistically, I wouldn't say he fits with the other guys, like Michael Jordan at North Carolina, but there was just something about the kid innately that you were attracted to. Brogdon's averaging nine and a half a game for the Bucks. He played part of the All-Star Weekend in New Orleans in the BBBA Compass Rising Stars Challenge. His coach was Jay Laranega, the son of Miami coach Jim Laranega. Jay is an assistant for Brad Stevens with the Boston Celtics. And Jim Laranega's grandson, James Joseph Laranega III, was a ball boy at age 11 for Malcolm Brogdon. The USA team in that Rising Stars game. Here's the resume. When you look at that, you might say, this guy might have a chance in the NBA. And he fits perfectly in Milwaukee. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of a San Antonio Spur. Somebody who's a lockdown defensive player, can guard multiple positions, make open shots, really smart. And as Greg Popovich might say, somebody who's over themselves. You know what Malcolm Brogdon's long-term goal is? He'd like to bring clean water to countries that don't have it. But that's his goal and how he hopes to use some of his financial success. Selfish guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a three that spins off. Would have been big for Reed. Get them back within one possession. Just one out of six from three-point range for Reed. He made 191 career threes now. He's seventh all-time in Miami history. Senior out of Ewing, New Jersey, Davon Reed. Ralph thought it, there was a travel. Tony Bennett came flying off the bench. James Breeding held his hand up as if to say, and he was nodding as if to say, yeah, I think I kind of agree with you about that. Brown steps into a three, rebound by Wilkins. Under nine and a half to go. There's two threes made by each team tonight. See this Virginia attack, Vasilovich. Thompson tried to get off on the dribble drive last time. That's the matchup here. Parentes leaned in, trying to get a foul call. Did not succeed. Vasilovich goes into the traffic to come away with the rebound. They list him at 6-3. DJ Vasilovich, number four for Miami. They what might give him a crack state, about 5-10. I was going to say they might give him four or five speed, too, and I don't think he's got that. <laughs> Boy, he can shoot it. He can. Brown fouled. He is not afraid to charge into the middle of that Virginia defense. Super Tuesday tomorrow night, SEC Big Ten doubleheader, starting with South Carolina and Florida. Huge game, particularly for Florida. The top of that SEC. And then Indiana and Iowa. Indiana trying to boost its resume right on the bubble. Super Tuesday presented by CenturyLink on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Diakite called for second foul for Virginia. And Bruce Brown made the first free throw. Jack Salt back in. Diakite goes out, as does Parentes. And 
Marielle Shayok is also back on the floor for UVA. Is this the first to 50? You know how in the NBA they say first to 100 is going to win the ball game? Unless it's the All-Star game, then it's first to 190. Yeah. I think they're playing less and less defense in the NBA All-Star game every year. It's going to be impossible next year to play less defense than they did <laughs> last night. Thompson, good move to get wide open for a shot and then missed it. And a rebound in traffic by Murphy. He's their leading rebounder for the year, seven and a half per game. Well, he's really struggled there. He did all the hard work. I think he's one for five now. This one, it looked like Virginia might pull away. Another cold spell. Miami's chipped back within four. Reed to the bucket. Miami bench wanted a foul call. They don't get it. And it's Thompson leading a four on three. The extra pass from Jerome to Shayok. And a long rebound to Lawrence, and he gets called for a push off. And that's a big whistle against Miami. Second foul on Lawrence. They're over the limit. It'll be a one and one for UVA after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by eBay. Find new, unique, and everything in between on eBay. And in part by Sprint. Switch and save today. Visit Sprint.com slash network. Applebee's all-in burger meal deal for just $9.99. Knock one loose off of your hands. Terrific coach Jim Laranega, known as sixth season in Miami. He's already been the ACC Coach of the Year twice, including last year when they won 27 games. Of course, 2013, first time in the history of the Miami program, they won the ACC regular season and the ACC tournament title. Isaiah Wilkins misses the front end of a 101, so it's still just a four-point lead for UVA with 7.45 to go. And they go a little bit smaller here. Four round one with four perimeter guys with Murphy as your lone big. Murphy looked around, found he was open, short from the wing, and the rebound by Wilkins. You can see, though, he's changed the respect level of Jack Salt because Salt did not go up and challenge on the ones he made earlier. And he said, okay, you're going to stick those consistently. I've got to go ahead and make it a little uncomfortable. Monday continues from the Big 12, Texas and West Virginia coming up next. Salt came to set a jarring screen. Parenka dumped it off. Nice block underneath by Lawrence, and then it spins off. And out of the scrum, here comes a three-on-three -three for Miami. Reed attacks on the ball. And it is Miami's ball. The section of fans down there thought, it went off Reed and out of bounds. A terrific dish, but a better defensive play right there by Lawrence. Now, do they think, I mean, holy smokes, a little bit of contact. I think that's two, two calls now on this end that Miami had to go against him. And the out of bounds play, Reed short of the three, run down by Lawrence, but it went to Salt. And it could have been a foul on that play you were referencing, but then it did look like if they weren't going to call a foul, it might have been Reed who was last to touch before it went out of bounds. Did you say first to 50 wins? I think it's first to 45. You're probably right. You're probably right. Five to shoot. Day off. Makes it, tough shot, that's a two, says Pat Driscoll right on top of the play. It just feels like everything is such a grind, and shot clock is putting pressure on Virginia every possession. It's not like they run it down and then get a great shot. I mean, Shayok made a tough shot to rescue that possession. Virginia foul, and it's going to be on Isaiah Wilkins, his second. Four Hall of Fame coaches, their teams in action Wednesday. Syracuse hosting number 10 Duke from the Carrier Dome at 7, then off to Chapel Hill for 7th ranked Louisville, number 8 North Carolina. Great night of college hoops, Sonic Blockbusters on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. It'll be Miami ball out of bounds. So sitting is the new smoking, but I promise you for four straight hours on Wednesday night, I will be sitting watching those two games. I can't wait. Sitting is the new what? Smoking. Smoking. You know how bad sitting is for you for extended periods of time? I do. 
that's what I'm saying, but I'm going to commit to sitting for four Is hours. Is it as bad as smoking? No, not as bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I slept at a Holiday Inn last night. <laughs> Brown, shut off by Hall, still 10 to shoot. Lawrence. Brown down the lane. Boy, that's been their best offense tonight, but he's been able to penetrate. And there is another Virginia foul. It's on Shayok, his first. Well, you talk about a young kid with talent. Six foot five, 190 pounds by Brown, fearless. Attacking one of the nation's most stout defenses. I like his competitive spirit. The 15 foul against Virginia. And they're still a couple away from the bonus with under five and a half minutes to go now. Strong drive and plenty of contact with Diakite. And that's the third on Mamadi Diakite. Virginia trying to end a three game losing streak. They haven't lost three in a row since January of 2011. They haven't lost four in a row since they dropped eight straight in Tony Bennett's first year at UVA, 2009-2010. Two free throws by Lawrence, a four-point game. Ruka Izundu returns, and Anthony Lawrence Jr. goes out. See, in the past, you knew where you were going on the offensive end. You were going to jump it down to Gill. See if he couldn't draw an extra defender. Where do they go here? Parentes has found the ball late in clocks. Jayhawk, strong drive. Wilkins, underneath, up and in. I'll tell you what, this kid has been their best rebounder all night. He has not been afraid to mix it up on both ends. Six foot seven, 225, Wilkins doing work on the glass. And the guy you can see getting better and better with each season. Now a junior out of Lilburn, Georgia. Four and a half to go. Every possession big now with the pace of this game and the low-scoring nature of it. Brown again, fearlessly in the middle of that defense. And he'll earn another trip to the free throw line. Wilkins called for the foul, his third. Well, this guy idolizes LeBron James, and he says he likes his grit and the power with which he plays. Well, this guy plays with four, Sean. Seventy-two percent free throw shooter. One of four freshmen on the roster for Jim Laranega. They have just nine scholarship players. Only eight of them here tonight because of the suspension of Jaquan Newton. They're down one scholarship for NCAA sanctions. They'll get back to the full 13 next year. They were holding out some room. They thought they might get a fifth-year transfer, particularly Andrew White, who left Nebraska at the very last minute, literally the first day of classes, transferred to Syracuse instead. He would have been a big factor for Miami, as he has been at Syracuse. It's been crucial in the turnaround of their season, Andrew White. A little frustration by Lawrence coming around that screen. Felt like it was illegal by Virginia. Under four minutes to go. Under five on the shot clock. Parentes, no. And Virginia has a five-point lead, despite the fact their best offensive player. Parentes had a brutal shooting night, two for 12, and he hasn't scored a point since seven minutes remained in the first half. And Jamie Breeding, besides he's seen James Breeding, enough of the action away from the ball, and he calls a foul on Brown his second. Uh, Wilkins has been terrific on a team that has needed some extra opportunities on the offensive end. All of a sudden, Virginia getting to the offensive glass. They've got a five-point cushion thanks to that work. 56. It's a big game for Florida State. That would get them to 10-5 and five in the ACC and tie with Notre Dame for fourth. After 
The action Texas West Virginia tonight, Sports Center tonight, with John Butchendross and Steve Levy. Highlights, breakdown, a big night called basketball in the NHL. Spring training is underway. There's always NFL news, everything else you want to know, Sports Center at night on ESPN. Bucci now has become sort of like Magic or Cher or one named Bucci. Yes, Bucci May. Everybody knows who he is, Bucci. I would go with Bucci and Leaves. Bucci and Leaves. Yeah. The Levy Lounge is one of my favorites. I'm not a awesome. hockey person, but could I get into the Levy Lounge, I wonder? You sure could. And let me just say this to you about Florida State, something moving forward that I would like to see that team do more of, and I know Bacon is a sensational player. Jonathan Isaacs needs to be a little bit more assertive on the offensive end. That kid is gifted, he's talented, he can score in a lot of ways. I want him to be more selfish. Tough turnover for Miami. And they're in big trouble now, down by seven with 3.10 to go. The drought continues for Miami, and you said it, Sean. This is the last team in the country you want to be swimming upstream or climbing uphill, whatever you want to say, because they just are going to grind possessions, use a lot of clock. Wilkins <laughs> shot was blocked. Virginia doesn't turn it over. They've had one turnover this half. They average under 10 per game, third fewest in the country. Only Mike Bray's fighting Irish in Notre Dame and Michigan. Commit fewer turnovers per game, and the Virginia average is going to come down tonight. Just six. And that's a shot clock violation. You see, in parentheses, is two for 13. We've touched on our son. But the reality is this poor kid is being put in a position consistently of being in a no option. i got to go ahead and fire it. Timeout, Miami. Let's take a look at tonight's defensive spotlight, Doris. It's brought to us by Michelin. Well, Virginia can tire you out on the defensive oh, end of the floor. I get it. I get it. <laughs> They'll sit down in the stands and try to prevent that dribble drive. Everybody's always in help position, so it's not just one defender you've got to beat. I did think that could be a foul on Salt. It doesn't go Miami's way. It turns the other direction. And a lot of what they've been able to do tonight to get this lead is based on what it's always based on, their defense. Yeah. When the rubber meets the road, <laughs> they do it on the defensive end. They tire you up. Really One good, good turn deserves another. 34 points for Miami. Well, Virginia with 41 points for the game Saturday at UVA. As Tony Bennett said, that was not good enough. They got pounded. 41 might win the game tonight. 41 got them a 20 plus point loss on Saturday in Chapel Hill. 24 points to be exact. They lost 65 to 41. The Miami downsizes again, and so much of what they're looking for is spacing. One timeout left for the Canes, a double up high. Which is so hard to get through these lines of defense in the pack line for Virginia. Reed managed to get free and gets it to bounce in to make it a five-point game with under 220 to go. And Marion Shayok is saying, hey, he, he hooked me on that shot. But, I mean, listen, how about the individual play required to beat the quality of that defense? That's incredible. They worked incredibly hard for that two-point field goal. Two minutes to go, Virginia. Ooh, a turnover. Right when we said they're going to reduce their average of turnovers, which was 9.8 coming in, they had six. They won't get to the average tonight. They might. A couple of turnovers here. Recent possessions for Tony Bennett. Yeah, DJ Vasilovich all fired up on the defensive end. He's the one who was pressuring the handler. Adam Fisher, one of the assistants, went all the way down to Australia to recruit Vasilovich. Boy. A little bump called there on Shayok. There's Vasilovich. Apparently, they didn't know anything about him. They heard the Yale coaches talking about Vasilovich. They were intrigued. Stanford also apparently had interest. If I was the assistant coach, I would volunteer to go down on that recruiting trip to beautiful Australia. Maybe say, I need about three weeks to evaluate yeah. DJ. 
Well, he's born in Canada. His parents are from the former Yugoslavia, so he's a well-traveled young man. As you said, Sean, he's played in high-level competition. I know he doesn't have the speed, but he's got the smarts, the shooting ability. Both teams over the bonus now, and Reed with a couple of free throws. All of a sudden, it's a one-possession game and pressure on this offensive possession for the University of Virginia. Spoken before, under 10 to shoot. Diakite had it blocked by Murphy, who thought it was clean. And that's a big whistle. Jim Larinaga on the bench didn't like it either. That is a very tough call. It's the fourth foul on Murphy. Oh boy. Wow. Wow. Bad call. Bad call, and at a terrible time. And there's no body contact, None. and that's clean up top. Yeah. And the thing is, if that baseline official just slides well, he's slightly... very good position to see it. Well, I thought he was actually in decent position. And, I, and if he needed to, he could have taken a slide over on, on the baseline. But that, that was bad. I mean, this is not a good call. You can't anticipate because the guy's adjusting and leaning back that it's a foul. In fact, Gia would have been better served, Sean, to lean in instead of adjust his body. Then it would have been a legitimate whistle. Well, perhaps just to serve, Diakite missed both. 10 team fouls on Miami, so it's a double bonus when Virginia goes to the free throw line. Chance to tie it with a three-point field goal. And Vasilovich tries for it and makes it. Oh, that recruiting budget pays off. <laughs> this young man's fired up. He's competed on the defensive end. And the shot clock, I think, briefly had an issue. That may be the stoppage. We've talked all the time. You see the, the defender here in the gap, and he gives it up because he has to slide a little bit deeper to the corner. You can see their instinct is to be in the gaps, and that allows a three. Try to figure out what the officials' conference is about. Look pretty clearly to be a three-point field goal. Seven straight points for Miami. They're going to get him out pretty quick, so whatever it was, well, whatever it was better been important. You have a team that has momentum. Right. And you're stopping the game. They didn't bother to tell us what it's all about. And now a 30-second timeout called by Virginia. So 41 apiece. Not much difference in the second half from the first. It was 20 to 19 Miami at the half. Every possession in a game like this is important, but here we are now in the final minute of the tie game. These are critical possessions. And again, I go back to who do you go to? Because the ball is finding London Parentes late, Sean, but it's been in tough clock situations. They run that circle motion. They're trying to be active along the baseline side. You'd like to see them touch the paint a little bit earlier in the possession to try to create something. Uh, you can see Miami. Double bonus. And a couple things. I'd like to see in the future the men go to when you call a timeout, you can advance the ball up, similar to what they have in the women's game. Parentes to Wilkins. They're back in the hands of their team leader, points and assists. We've had a tough night tonight. They don't even look at the basket tonight in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. Devin Hall, five to shoot. Parentes has to do something, throws it away, and then Brown's fouled by Hall. And he'll go to the free throw line for the last one and one of the night. Got to give a ton of credit all night long to Davon Reed doing a heck of a job competing with London Parentes. He just does his best to make sure he stays between Parentes and the basket. His help comes over and a nice job by Brown to be opportunistic. But Reed has competed defensively against Parentes all night. This will be a one and one, five out of six tonight for the freshman. Being frozen by his own teammate who's tying his shoe. 
And Dave Henry taking a long time to do it. Bruce Brown. about how fearless he is as a competitor. He's got a football wide receiver. Custom to taking some hits, stand in and deliver. So Miami has its first lead since 1852 remains. This gets too late. You've got a timeout here. Shot clock is off. Parentes, Hall, eight seconds to go. Hall, underneath for Wilkins, blocked shot, and a foul call by James Breeding. To the chagrin of the Canes on the floor and on the bench, and Isaiah Wilkins is not getting up. Well, this is the same official who called a foul on what was a clean block a moment ago. And he better have gotten this one right underneath the basket again. Another situation where it's a drop pass. And that looks like a lot of ball there. And I know his legs get taken out, but it's actually momentum because the defender has got the ball. Wow. Wow. I don't think that's a foul either time. Wilkins back on his feet. Yeah, that's two you'd like to have back. Yeah, and wow. This goes in the loss column for Miami, I think. Jim Laranega will have an animated conversation with the folks in the league office. You just can't miss on those kind of calls. And to be fair, Doris, as Wilkins makes the first, they both look clean. We're 50 feet away. They both look clean from here. Jim Laranega saying now he wants the timeout now. That's the last Miami timeout. So Wilkins will have one more to tie it. He's a 72.3% free throw shooter for the season. So if he can make it to tie the game, Miami will have four seconds to try to win it. No, he just, <laughs> he just to he verbalize louder, it think, more yeah. often. You pick your spots. <laughs> well, let's see where Jim Laranega goes if Wilkins makes the free throw to tie the game. Of course, very important block out here on a miss. To tie it with four seconds to go. Nothing but net. And Tony Bennett uses a timeout. He still has one left. I think obviously you are trying to get your best, either Reed or Brown. Sean, moving with momentum on the catch as far, far up the floor as you can. But four seconds is plenty of time. Plenty. And they'll try to take advantage of that time, as you said several times tonight, and it's key. Without Juan Newton, their point guard would be handling the ball in this situation. But Bruce Brown has performed admirably in that role throughout the three games. They're trying to go to three and oh during this three-game suspension up to it, if they can get a win here tonight. How about Wilkins? He falls, he was in clear pain, and the ability to stand up and make those shots, shake it off, get your mind right. Well, we got two trips to the free throw line down the stretch here. I think Miami fans in particular will have a very hard time accepting. In the read, with some room on the catch, has to let it go, and it poked away from behind. Shoots at the buzzer! Will it count? The signal by James Breeding right now is it is good for the win for Miami at the buzzer, but they'll have to check it. It looked like they had squandered the opportunity to get a shot up when they got poked away. The Miami players went to the locker room. Jim Laranega called them back. Seeing the replay on the scoreboard doesn't think he got it off in time. 
but the signal was the signal on the floor good this is crucial yes. yeah that's obvious okay because yep. it was closer than hand. i thought yeah unbelievable shot by davon reed but in all likelihood it isn't going to count well they're taking a longer look at it than i would have thought Doors seem pretty I think it's clear. obvious. Yeah, no doubt. It has to be irrefutable evidence, but there it is. Both both the zeros and the red outline clearly indicate this is no good. And they wave it off. They will head to overtime. Well, we wanted a 45 points. Would have won it in regulation, it would, but maybe 45 points will win it overtime. You never know. <laughs> Tied at 43, back for bonus basketball on Big Monday, right after this. These seats, these seats are just as we've seen today. Tony Bennett's team has lost a couple of overtime games. Matter of fact, arguably their worst loss of the season was in overtime at Pittsburgh in early January. And they lost a double overtime game at Virginia Tech. That was on February 12th, a game in which they blew a double-digit lead to lose to Buzz Williams and the Hokies. Diakite controlled the tip, even though it looked like it went right up over the head of Murphy. It sure did. did Murphy it? came back. He's perplexed. Like, could we redo that? Yeah, how am I supposed to tip that when you throw it off my skull? Hall to Parentes. Wilkins out there. Now Darius Thompson. And Diakite to start the overtime for Virginia. Hall of three. Step back three for Hall. He has been the most confident player all night for the Cavaliers. He has 15 points. It was two for 12 from three over the last four games and a steal by Isaiah Wilkins. Now, man, it gone by in overtime. Thompson, tough shot, poked around, kept alive, and a fresh shot clock for Virginia. The offensive glass has actually saved Virginia tonight. Thompson from just about the same spot where he missed a moment ago, out of bounds. It goes to, and might be a foul call by James Green. Yes, it is. It's on Diakite, his fourth. Yep, he got the arm of Anthony Lawrence. So here's Lawrence. And both teams in the double bonus now. He's 71% for the season. Two out of two tonight. First point of the overtime for Miami. Marielle Shayok back in for Darius Thompson. Tony Bennett called London Parentes over in that brief break, and you wonder what he said, just because Davon Reed has competed so hard, and when London has given the ball up, Reed has almost face-guarded him. I just cannot say enough about the defense Davon Reed has played all night. Brown are over 40 minutes played tonight for Miami. They've gone just about the distance. Shayok on two, short. Vasilovic with the rebound. Now Miami with a chance to take the lead. Under three minutes to go in overtime in the first overtime session of the season for the Hurricanes. Miami came in, winners of two in a row. The officials conferring Jamie Lucky and Pat Driscoll. Diakite, who has fouled out. 
He's an athletic mobile big, and he's done this all night where he stepped out to try to make a play, but that almost looks like, I get it, he's tripped him up, but I mean, Sean, it could have been a turnover go the other way, so I almost feel like he got a call. Up. Well, the gesture by Jamie Lucky was that it was a trip with yeah. the leg. Wow, I mean, listen. Oh, well, he stepped on his foot. He did, he did. But he also used that right arm to push Giacchite. I think get an argument either way. Yeah. Giacchite doesn't like it, but he's out of the game. And you play smaller now. Ty Jerome comes into the basketball game. 6'5", freshman guard in New Rochelle, New York. So you downsize. Giacchite out with five points, four rebounds. Here's Brown. Seven out of eight from the line. Really two for two on the last trip, and that was big. And he has tied it with 2.42 to go in overtime. And 15 out of 17 from the free throw line tonight. The team, they're 71.4 for the year. Better than that this evening, and a one point lead for the Canes. A win for the seventh time in nine games. Young, inexperienced, an undermanned team on the road against a Virginia team that's 39 and 3 in its last 42 ACC home games. Ball leans in. Foul call on Lawrence. He's the one guy, Sean, to me, who's actually pursued the basketball, wanted to look for opportunities to probe for his offense. He comes back to the basketball. He had given this up, goes back to it, and does what he should, attacks the body of the defender. Two shots, he's four out of four from the line. Four out of five from the line. 79.5 for the year entering tonight. For the red shirt junior. He had a tough night with most of his teammates. Saturday at Chapel Hill did not score, and he was 0 for 2 on that trip to the line. He's had a good night tonight. But two big misses there, obviously, as we approach two minutes left in overtime. Miami the ball and a one-point lead. Murphy comes to help with the screen. Wilkins switched out on Reed. Now Hall back in place, traveling the clock. Boy, just outstanding defense, both individually and with your big. Miami, you know, is going to a high ball screen late in the possession. And how about this by Hall? Just stay in a stance and stay between your man and the basket. And there's a reason why it's 47-46 in these two teams. With some offensive challenges, certainly, but they really do guard with great effort on every possession. Hall stripped of the ball by Lawrence. Under a minute and a half to go now. Miami the ball in a one-point lead here in overtime. He's coming up for another ball screen. Ooh, top pass off the hand of Vasilovic. The shoe of Davon Reed's been a problem here. 15 turnovers for Miami. Timeout, Virginia. We spoke with Joe Lenardi earlier from the bracket bunker. He said. Miami in good shape. Two. Wow. Close to 417. So the perception isn't changing, even with the win against North Carolina. Very similar resume. Have no the, real ugly losses for either of these two teams. Have the voters try to score against this Miami team? My goodness, I don't know how, what they have to do. Monmouth had as many votes today. No offense to them They're in the poll as did Miami. Vermont had one vote fewer than Miami. All right, chance for the lead again. Under a minute to go. Good look for Hall along with the three. Miami couldn't control the rebound. Off the fingertips of Brown. Great shot. And exactly who we thought they might go to, Devin Hall. He, he was confident. They set that screen. He made the right read. 
And I say you go right back to the kid. He had a good opportunity at it. Full shot clock. Ty Jerome, the freshman. Off to Parentos, way short. That looked like fatigue. Shayok in the right place. And Virginia has the lead. Eight seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Young Miami team on the road without its starting point guard. Can they finish the job? Brown, the freshman, three! And the lead for Miami with 24 to go in overtime. Good turn out by Tony Bennett. High ball screen by Wilkins. Shea under 15 to go. Strong drive. Way off with the shot. Run down by Reed. And he is fouled. And both of these free throws would just about cement it for Miami. It's the fourth personal foul on Isaiah Wilkins. There's a reason this kid was a five-star recruit. He's going to give the basketball up. Davon Reed looks into the post. You know Kamara is not thinking score there, but the freshman is. Reed, big free throw. And this one, even bigger. Chance to make it a two-possession game. Reed, three out of three from the line tonight. He's their best free throw shooter for the year, better than 82%. That's the last Virginia timeout. Let's check in again with Carl. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Here with uh, Seth and Jay, we're getting set for the uh, halftime report, Texas, West Virginia. And wouldn't you know it, West Virginia, the defensive specialists at home, trailing eight to nothing to start this thing on ESPN News. All right, Carl. Jim Laranega with his team around them and what's the strategy on a I guess but probably mostly Doris talking about if there's a miss and it's still a three-point game do you foul Virginia before right. the Cavs can shoot a three we saw Bob Huck as you mentioned that game against Texas Tech he elected yeah. not to foul at the end right. and, and think, they wound up in overtime I think so much of this is how much preparation have you done for these circumstances have you practiced this have you practiced with a particular amount of time, because if you have, and you're, you're Miami, and you push up on a rebound situation by Virginia, you give him a dribble or two and foul him before he comes across the line, but you've got to do it before you allow that guy to get into any kind of shooting motion. So much as is, have you put in the time? All goes for naught if he makes this. I'm generally a believer in fouling with a three-point lead in the final seconds. They call Reed Mr. Dependable. Great in the classroom, Dean's this student, dependable on the court as well. Can they depend on the free throw? You bet. Nothing but net. And now it's a four-point lead. They'll put a little bit of pressure on the background just to slow the advance. Up the back court to the fourth court. Brent is the miss. And Miami is going to leave with a rare victory by the home team in Charlottesville. Well, you talked about the coaching of Jim Lamanega. Your second leading scorer, your starting point guard, Jaquan Newton, has been missing for three games. Three up, three down. What a job getting his guys prepared. This is a tough building to play and win in, and a tough team to score against. Just terrific. Both of these coaches, to their beliefs, not afraid to suspend key players at critical times of the year. And good for Jim Laranega. The starting point guard. They win three games in a row. To take a huge step toward the NCAA tournament. I think to me that gets them in. So the first four-game losing streak for Virginia. Since Tony Bennett's first season of 2009-2010, Miami largely won it at the free throw line. 20 out of 22 from the line for the game. And now they have a better record than Virginia. We'll see if they get anywhere near as many votes in the poll next week. In overtime, the final score is Miami 54, Virginia 48. Now for Allison Williams, Doris Burke, our terrific crew, led by our producer Eric Mosley and our director Dan Regan, Sean McDonough saying so long from Charlottesville. Now let's send you to West Virginia, the Bob and Friends.